皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So, today, guys,、uh, recently I've made a、uh, personal React video, the React video on my own, where I reacted to a video made by Nobita from Japan. Now, I made a video on the other, just a few months ago, I think it was three or four months ago, talking about why Japanese people are the most unwilling to help others, basically, why they're cold hearted. And just a few days before my video, Nobita from Japan, Nobita actually made a very similar video talking about why Japanese people are cold hearted. And a lot of people were like, wow, Shogo and Nobita made a bit. Made a really similar video at the same timing, you know, and a lot of people were talking about that. So I wanted to react to, to his video too. Like, what kind of、um, aspects from what, what kind of、uh, points that he viewed to explain why Japanese people are cold hearted? It was really, really educational, and I learned a lot from his points of views too. I think the way he explains things and the way that I explain things are very, very different. I think he's more of a journalist kind of person. And so he really likes using data more. And I'm the kind of person who really likes to use science more, like psychology or brain science or you know, these kind of things or historical backgrounds. I guess I like to use science more, yeah. But, anyways,、uh, it's always great to learn from other people as well. But today, in today's podcast, I like to talk a few things. Now, I always say,、um, I, always said, I said in that video too, where I reacted to his video, that I really, really enjoy his content. And that's true. That's not, of course, I'm not lying. I've, I've watched almost All of his videos to learn more about Japan. And I really do think that you would absolutely gain a deeper understanding of Japan if you watch his videos. The quality of his content is amazing, seriously. The things that I would never even think of, he's done it before, you know, many, many times actually going up to the people, interviewing them. He's met so many people that I would love to actually meet in person and talk to, too. So his effort to, you know, continue to contact them until he was able to actually meet them was, must be really, really on.、Uh, uh, there must be a lot of effort to get them. There. So, he, although I respect him very much, there are a few things watching his videos that I cannot agree with. So, today I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Of course, I don't want to be a kind of person who just is like, what should I say, positive towards everything that everyone else does. So, I do want to talk about these things too, especially in this podcast channel where I'm very, very, very honest about all of the things. So,、um, two things. There's two things that I cannot agree with whenever I watch Nobita's、uh, videos. Number one, this is also very important. He tends to generalize, is this the right word, on people from where they're originally from, the countries, their nations, their religions. So the, he tends to say that, for example, these,、mm, you can say, like, for example, Americans are like this. Or、uh, you can say that、um, you know, there was a, a, a video that、uh, he made that I think it was that Japanese man, Yuta san, was reacting to. I think it was talking about Nigerians yeah, in, Jap- in Japan causing trouble. And the way he explained it is that you know, Nigerians are all like this kind of thing. You know, Nigerians are always causing trouble kind of thing. The way he explains it, he, I, he might not mean it, but the way he uses his words and explains it. It makes it sound like that. And I think that Japanese man Yuta was saying this too, but especially when he talks in Japanese, you can really understand that he sees people by the countries alone. Now, I completely agree that where you grew up in, the culture that you grew up in, does of course shape who you are. A major part of who you are will obviously be shaped by where you grew up in. But still, As a man who grew up in the US, went to China, has a Chinese wife, but still Japanese、um, in terms of nationality, I really feel that、um, where, you grew, where you were born and grew up doesn't shape everything, though. I would say it shapes about 50% of who you are. The other 50%, it depends on who that person really is. Yeah. So I really do not like saying that this. Country's people are like this all the time because that's not true. That's impossible. Like in Japan, too, there's tons of people who say that Chinese are always like this, Koreans are always like this, and that's the reason why, why I, hate, I hate them. You know, these kind of people always exist and they will never be gone, unfortunately. But I personally really, really don't like、mm, I would ve- feel very uncomfortable whenever I hear these kind of expressions. So that's the first thing that I do not like. I'm pretty sure、um, you would probably agree with me about this. 
a lot of people probably feel a little bit uncomfortable whenever they're they are turned into a label. I talked about this when I talked about how my tea ceremony sensei sometimes talks with me, um, saying that well, you grew up in the U.S., so inevitably you're this kind of person, right? You know. Well,、uh, it's better if I'm right in front of you. Wouldn't you communicate with me? Wouldn't that be better? Now, if you want to actually say, like, if you want to actually say these kind of people, let's say、hmm, Nigerians in this case or Chinese in this case, you would, I think, it would be respe- respectful if you at least have gone to that country before. If you've stayed there for a while and actually communicated with the local people, then maybe you have a little bit of rights to talk about that. Maybe still, I wouldn't say it personally, but obviously, it's impossible for you to go to every every country and talk with every country's people properly. So in that case, I personally would believe that you should avoid using such expressions. Again, obviously, my personal opinions, yeah, but I would I I feel uncomfortable absolutely. And number two, Nobita. Even though he talks a lot about social problems in Japan, in most of his videos, his conclusion is that although, despite Japan having many many problems, Japan is still one of the most comfortable. Well, probably not one of the the most comfortable country to live in. It is always his conclusion in many of his videos. Now, I disagree with this as well. Now, this is again very personal.、Um, it's not. It's not like. Which is, I'm not saying that it might be、um, uncomfortable for you or comfortable for you. It really is how I feel it. Now, again, as I talked about in the re- React video recently, I did of Nobita's video. I explained that Japan is just really, really good at cleaning up the surface and not the inside of anything. So, I personally loved living in China. I loved living in China. Now. You guys might think if you see the news and everything, well, China has all the polluted air, all the、uh, terrible traffic, all the、uh, the security cameras in the cities, and、um, you know the government doesn't allow any freedom. They restrict the use of、uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can't use any of these applications, and they force you to use the national kinds. It's a terrible environment.、Um, yeah, again, that's the surface of it, right? That's the surface that comes out. The inside is what I use. I tend to focus on. The surface, of course, is important. Of course, it's important. It's not something that you can ignore. Obviously, if China had better air,、um, less polluted air, it would be much better. Obviously, that's, that's good. But at the same time, I personally focus more on the inside of the culture and not the outside of it. So, the in terms of the inside, being in China. Um, Chinese people, although again,、um, we what should I say, is really close to Japan.、Uh, and everyone looks almost the same. We have the same hair color, skin color, and everything. But still, at the same time, it's a very big country. So even within the same country, there's different cultures. So a lot of people are more, much more accepting other cultures. And also at the same time, they have very strong、mm, sense of nationality too. So they're very kind to each other. They help each other out in in、um, when they need help. You know. I, I remember when I was in China, I was riding a bus, and an old lady came in, and the people riding the bus immediately, ev- almost everyone stood up to lend their seats to her, the grandma. So I was like, "Wow, this is like actual kindness." And because it doesn't have all the peer pressure and all that stuff, if they lend their seats to someone, they genuinely want to help. In Japan, I, again. It's bec- I, I, the thing I really don't like about Japan. I got to be really honest with you guys with about this is that you can't easily trust anyone. You can't trust someone that easily because that person might be doing something just because that person wants to look better. It, because how you're seen by other people is the top priority, right? Of course, in other cu- cultures too, you might do something because you want to、uh, look cooler, you know, be seen as a nicer person, kind of thing. But the、um, chances that that kind of thing happening is much, much more、um, in Japan. So, I really liked that I was able to be myself when I was in China. Surprisingly, guys, I had the weirdest hairstyle. I wore the weirdest clothes. I had、uh, three piercings on my left ear. 
I always wore huge sunglasses. Yeah, and I wore clothes that didn't match my sunglasses at all. And I was riding a、uh, motorbike to school. A very very weird person with wacky clothes and very long hair, with a huge sunglasses and three piercings on his left ear, was going to Beijing University every day. So that was who I was in China. Now look at me. Now in Japan, I have a hairstyle that everyone would probably think that is a okay hairstyle. N- nothing very special going on. I、uh, tried to keep myself clean as much as possible, doing nothing weird, you know, not standing out, because that's what's required in Japan. But am I myself as much as I was when I was in China? The answer is no. And for me, no matter how safe it is, no matter how clean it is on the surface, living everyday life, be if you're able to be yourself. Or not be yourself, always suppressing something that you want to actually do.、Um, what should I say? In terms of business, in terms of these big things like dreams and such, I'm doing everything that I want to. But still, there are things that I have to hide to Japanese people or can't say to Japanese people because of the peer pressure and such. I need to kind of hide my passion, you know. So that's really sorry. My my second daughter probably fell down or tripped or something downstairs. So that that's. What I really feel uncomfortable about living in Japan. So my conclusion, whenever I talk about social problems, when I talk about some of the ne- negative aspects of Japan, my conclusion is not that I like living in Japan. No, I would be happy to leave Japan if I can still survive. Right now, even if I go overseas, I don't have a proper business I can use to survive overseas and such. So I can't leave immediately. I need a few more years to gain more experience in business and traditional culture that I'm doing right now. So I will. I, I can survive here. This is my home home la- homeland. So I can survive. But am I feeling comfortable? The answer is absolutely no. But we need to separate that though. I need to separate that completely from. Then, do I not like the traditional culture? The answer is obviously no. I love Japanese traditional culture, and that's the reason why I'm so addicted to it, and I admire it so much.、Mm-hmm. What Japanese people in the past cherished and saw as an important thing, or the teachings, the lessons they wanted to bring down to the、uh, the newer generations in the future. And what and how we are actually living our lives today in Japan are completely different. There's so many very precious teachings and lessons that our ancestors left for us, for us to learn through the activities that has been、um, completely systemized, like the Budo training, tea ceremony, it could be anything else, the stage arts and everything. If we continue training those, there are ways for us to learn the messages. What the what our ancestors wanted to teach us, we can still learn it. We have that kind of environment. But have we actually been able to bring those lessons into our daily lives today? The answer is no. And that's the reason why I want to try to create a system so that we can carry on the very important teachings. So me feeling comfortable or uncomfortable living in current Japan right now. And my passion towards Japanese traditional culture is completely different and separated within me. Yeah, so that is one thing I really wanted to make clear before I end this podcast. So then, everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. So I know there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to travel, study, or work, or even train our traditional culture and such. However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we're facing a lot of social problems. We are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I want to try to solve the social problems, preserve and evolve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a better future. And to do this, the nearest goal I have right now is to achieve two million subscribers by Darren Twenty Twenty Three, our main channel. So your likes and comments will help to boost our videos. New viewers have never seen our channel before, so it'd be great if you can help us out. Thank you so much, guys. So the thing that I always struggle with is that when people tell me, "Shogo, I would really love to move to Japan. Like, how could I do that? How, how, what should I study? You know, how should I work and everything?" And again, I personally, again, don't want to continue living in Japan forever. But at the same time. There are tons of, for example, 
people who are originally from overseas countries that are in Japan right now, for example, YouTubers, influencers, and they often say that although there are a lot of problems in Japan, still in the end, it's very comfortable. So it's really up to you. If you, if you like Japan a lot, it still probably will be a dreamland for you. And the safety and the, uh, the cleanness that I take for granted, if I actually move out of Japan, maybe I'll think too. Oh my gosh, maybe Japan was better. I don't know. It depends on where I'm going and such. But still, I don't want to discourage anyone who wants to move to Japan as well. Yeah, and I'll talk about that in a different podcast. So for now, thank you so much for listening, guys. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.